Costa and Ramadan around the corner, but virtual plans are in place so people can see certain sites. Watching now from 124 News here in Israel. The Tower of David Museum about the new virtual reality experience. Let's take a look. Uh, we developed in our innovation lab to engage the, uh, the visitors with the content. We developed an immersive game, um, an amazing and fantastic experience when people can um, know a lot about uh, the three religions in Jerusalem. And uh, of course, it's kind of a production, but right now they can join the film and enjoy the festivals of, of the city we're talking about of course first of all passover uh, as you know um, we're talking about uh, the great blessing of, of the um the prophet at the wedding war we're talking about uh, um easter uh when the church of the holy sepulchre hosts uh the saturday of uh, the holy life and we're talking about uh the prayers of ramadan at um Dome of the Rock um, on Alpha, an Alpha Mosque. So now uh, we invite all the lovers of Jerusalem from all over the world to join uh, our website and enjoy the Holy City film, um, enjoy the festivals of Jerusalem and be part of the experience. On to something completely different in the Netherlands, a band of thieves ignored the national coronavirus curfew and got away with an art heist that takes a page from a Hollywood movie. Our Emily Francis has more on this brazen robbery. Let's take a look. He's one of the most famous and influential painters in the history of Western art. <laughs> 130 years after his suicide, Vincent van Gogh's Impressionist paintings sell for millions of dollars apiece. Just two years ago, this 1882 painting, Women Mending Nets in the Dunes, sold for six and a half million dollars. You have to bear in mind that there are hardly any Van Goghs left on the market. And so the buyers are ready to pay and to overpay for a work on this quality and importance. With museums closed and the world sequestered at home during the coronavirus pandemic, burglars managed to break into the Netherlands' Singer Lauren Museum and steal the 1884 painting, Spring Garden. The thieves came in uh, by breaking the glass uh, door and, uh, well, at, at that point they got in and got through a few doors and uh, took, the, took the painting. The museum's director is dumbfounded at how someone would want to steal a painting of a woman looking at flowers an image of tranquility and comfort at a time when the world is anything but. Uh, I appeal to those who are now in possession of the work that they treat it with respect. They do not damage it, so sooner or later... Dance and don helmets shaped like the coronavirus as part of a street play performance to get motorists to stay indoors as the country continues to implement a lockdown to tackle the spread of the infectious disease. And we leave you with these images. That's it for now. This special edition returns shortly. I'm Benita to the Bean in Tel Aviv. Back in a bit. Stay tuned. Inside. 24 News Special Edition. I'm Benita to the Bean coming to you live from Tel Aviv. We continue with our rolling coverage of the global coronavirus pandemic, with the number of cases in Israel rising to more than 5,000. The death toll is now at 21. The latest victim, a 98-year-old woman who passed away in hospital in Beersheba this morning. Health officials confirming 5,591 cases with 94 people in serious condition. 224 patients have recovered. Now, Israel has been ranked first place in the COVID-19 health safety countries ranking by the Deep Knowledge Group, followed by Singapore and Slovakia. The economic impact of the lockdown measures being felt across Israel, unemployment is at more than 24%, officials confirming a short while ago that more than 1 million Israelis are now without work. Well, for more insights into the spread of the virus, we now welcome Professor Eyal Neshen, the Director for the Center for Geographic Medicine and Tropical Diseases 
at Sheba Medical Center. Professor, thank you so much for your time. Now, as a guest researcher at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in Atlanta and a consultant to the World Health Organization, share with us your current assessment about what is happening globally right now with the virus. Even Donald Trump is warning of tough weeks ahead in the U.S. Would you be expected to see the increase in the number of cases globally in the way it is happening? Yes, certainly. We knew right from the beginning this is a highly contagious disease and the numbers were expected to rise exponentially worldwide. However, we do see nations that were effectively implementing uh, social distancing measures such as uh, China, that the disease is being, uh, the outbreak is being stopped and even the number of cases are dropped down. So when you talk about China, for example, various experts and leaders are talking about the number of coronavirus cases reaching a peak and then hopefully decline. Explain to all the non-medical viewers watching right now what this actually means and what this could mean for Islam down the line. Well, it means that when you effectively reduce the number of person-to-person -person meetings every day by keeping people at home, closing schools, the number of severe cases will also drop. However, when you when the society goes back to normal functioning, there's going to have to be behavioral change, which means people are going to have to wear masks. Uh, temperature reading are going to happen in in, in uh, public places, and uh, people that feel ill will have to self quarantine. We're probably going to also have to uh, implement special isolation on older persons and persons with risk of severe disease. And this may, may take longer before we are able to lift this uh, isolation measure. So Professor Israel has been ranked first place in the COVID-19 health safety countries ranking by the Deep Knowledge Group, followed by Singapore and Slovakia. So what is it that Israel is doing right at the moment, especially in terms of the measures
We appreciate your time and thank you to you and your teams for all the work that you are doing. Now earlier, I spoke to Superintendent Ricky Rosenfeld, the foreign media spokesperson for the Israeli police, and I asked him about the possibility of a full lockdown being enforced on some Israeli cities if this crisis actually deepens. Now let's take a listen to his response. If and when there'll be a government decision that certain areas or large cities across uh, Israel will be shut down, that will mean there will be roadblocks set up in all different areas around those cities, preventing people from physically moving in and out. And that would be even for necessities, even for vital issues that they would need to go through. As of now, people aren't permitted to go only to the supermarkets if necessary to buy groceries, etc. And the minimum amount of movements there. Therefore, we'd be talking about a lockdown of those cities. We have units that will uh, be in fact setting up roadblocks in those areas. And of course, our units will be fully uh, protected in order to make sure that they won't come in close contact with the people in that area. Of course, it'll be coordinated to take people to hospitals, individuals who are sick and are confirmed with the virus. But of course, we're not at that stage yet, but we're fully prepared to deal with that if necessary, if and when there'll be a government decision. Superintendent Ricky Rosenfeld now onto some more positive news. And Israel has converted a missile production facility to mass produce ventilators and offset a shortage of the life saving machines as the coronavirus continues to spread. Defense Minister Naftali Bennett warning that Israel only has 2,000 ventilators and needs many more of the breathing devices to help patients recover. Countries around the world have reported ventilator shortages and some have leaned on private companies and their militaries to boost production. The Israeli initiative is a collaboration between the Defense Ministry, state-owned Israel Aerospace Industries, and a company that makes medical devices. Well, we're taking a very short break now, but when we get back, the UK is rushing to prepare a 4,000-bed pop-up hospital on the banks of the River Thames, built in just over a week. We take you inside that new facility. This is I24 News Special Edition, back in a